the navy blues We are the old dark navy blues We're the team that never lets them down We're the only team old Carlton knows I think the first time we did that was when we lost to the Eagles in 87 over here. I remember that, the, the Wacker. lost by a couple of points. Three and points. you know why we lost that? Again, I got, I got absolutely smashed again at the end because I'm playing on Ross Glendinning. Yeah. So there was always a thing, back in the day we had this beautiful ruckman by the name of Harry Madden, 6 foot 11, yeah. and, and no out of bounds rules and things like no, that. Yeah. So, when you get into tight situations in a game and we're in front... He, he just belted. It's just... Oh, not so much belted, but what he would do is if... Imagine we're in, in the forward pocket. Harry had just meandered the ball two or three metres our way, but he'd hit it to the boundary yeah. line to go out. Let's have another throw in. He'll do the same thing again. <laughs> so we're in front. We lost at the Wacker. So good on me. But uh, Harry was looking a bit tired. I've decided to jump over the top. So Ross Glendinning's no dummy, so he's actually on the job here. So he gets over there. I jump up, whack the ball, lands in Ross's hands, he kicks the goal, they win the game. And then again at the end of the game, I think from memory walls, he's <laughs> so it was your it. fault yeah. we lost. Well I told okay. you it was. I'm happy to take the blame for yeah, it all. It. But Robert, you know, like made it very well known to the other 19 players <laughs> that played with us that day that it was all your fault that you caused us to lose this game yeah. by jumping up and doing what you didn't have to do instead of maybe going and putting your body on Ross. But anyway, fortunately, we only lost four games that night yeah. uh, because every time we did get motion. The first game was That's four four. Like They were all by very small yeah. margins. Yeah. 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 used to do the yeah. same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did Wolsey play in 79? No. No. No, he was a 70, 72, 69, so 68 he would have played. He played 68, 70, 68 and 70 and 72. Yeah. And uh, in 78 he um, had a falling out with Ian Stewart and ended up at yeah. Fitzroy. Oh, in the same yeah. year that he started with Carlton. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. But he stopped um, playing in 1980. But we lost four games that year, fortunately. The first one was the first game against Hawthorne, the, the grand final rematch. We lost to Hawthorne again, lost to the Eagles and lost to Sydney. Yes, yes. That's right. And thank goodness we only lost those four because we were punished. And I think we were too scared to lose. <laughs> yeah, punished. well, he's scared. He's scared yeah. the shit out of it. Well, at least we but it worked. It, it worked because we won a flag. So yeah. you could do anything and you'll do anything. We won a flag. So yeah. you could say, okay, it worked. Well, I suppose all clubs are looking at a thing, you know, to, to win, you've got to. You've got to have a percentage of mongrel in you and you have to be bigger, fitter, stronger 100%. than the opposition to yeah. get it done. Now, we may not have realised that at the time, yeah. you know, and even the modern player today, the game's so different, but yeah. they're very fit and capable, but whether they have that resilience to work through some of the challenges that you may encounter during the course of a game, and as Rocky was saying, you know, like with the, the psychologist and all that that comes and talks to you and gives you a few pointers in that 87 year, like, you know, be in the moment, you know, yeah. and, and it was um, Alan, Alan Jones, Jones was I suppose, Alan Jones, yeah. the Wallabies coach, Wallaby spoke coach, to yeah. us in 80, oh, wow. 87, in between, it was in the primary yeah. final, we went away, we went away with the players. Wow and all that we went away just up in the hills in Victoria for a night Richard Pratt flew him in in his chopper oh, nice. to come and speak to us and all that sort of stuff and it's still look it's relevant today you can't worry about what's happened prior in yep. the game because you know it's like a coach if you want to speak to somebody you're thinking okay Richard like you know mistakes happen mm. you know I'm not going to belittle you and you're not going to get dragged if you make a mistake but don't make two mistakes yeah, in a row yeah, that's right. sort of thing so the challenge is when when you've made an error or you get beaten in a contest, you've just got to have that inner will and strength to say, I'm going to win the next one. Yeah. You look forward to the contest with your eyes wide open and you give 110% yep. commitment. Sometimes you may lose two in a row, but at the end of it all, you've just got to kick to the curb what's yeah. happened because that's now part yeah. of history, yeah. albeit it might be three or four minutes ago. Yep. You can only live for what lies 100%. ahead. You know, and, and even not too far ahead. Like, yeah. you know, stay focused. On the moment. Yeah. And you can only yeah. play your so role. You do and a lot of things. things you know, football sport. Of course. For us, it's football sport. A lot of things that help you later in it life. Might. Because, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's business. Yeah. It's all business and things like that. Like, 
Well, yeah. to succeed in anything, I yeah. think like yeah. those 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 things you learn mm. help yeah. you in your yeah. in, in your yeah. business in your family. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like about you know, and I don't know this. You make an assumption from from afar with how Bossy's come into yeah. the situation, and he's he's got such a great history in terms of what he's achieved in football as a leader. You listen to Jonathan yeah. Brown, how he talks about him. He's somebody that if you had to jump over a fence and go into war, you'd jump with him because he wouldn't have to look that, well, how many are coming with me? Are they all coming or is there a couple not coming? But, the, you know, from sitting over here in WA watching the way the sides played this year, I reckon there's been some good conversation with players that yep. might have sort of been not so much on the fringe but like not 100% sure where they sat in the eyes 100%. of the coach. So all of a sudden he'll look you in the eye and Rocco, you can play. Yep. All right? So I, you know, I want you in my best 22 yep. and I'm here to support you and these are the great things that I know you yep. can do and I want you to acknowledge and let's discuss some of the things that I think you need to get better at and if you can come on board with me knowing that if you got better in that, that makes you better, that makes us better yep. as a team. And I'm not going to take you off the ground after you've had that mistake. Where previously you yeah. might have been straight I off the ground. I reckon one play that is. And dropped the following week. Would mm. be Lockie O'Brien. Yeah. Lockie O'Brien, I don't think. And this year he's kept his position. I think he's done really well. And then I think that conversation was had with him. Yeah. Because yeah. he's playing completely different. A lot of players will end up like... Because they're in the no man's land yeah, with yeah. their coach, they don't know where yeah, they sit. Yeah. Neither support of the coach, yeah. Because they yeah, won't yeah. acknowledge and tell you. And all you want is a player, Rocco, just tell me the truth. Yeah. Like, you know, don't bulldust me and tell me something that makes me feel good, but then you yes. don't want to pick yeah, me yeah. and you don't want to support me. So then yeah. at the end of the day, these players, and, and there's probably three or four or five of them now, from my perspective, looking 100%. from an outs a former player outside, looking in at what they're doing, they've had a burden lifted yep. off their shoulders that they've carried for a number 100%. of years, thinking, OK, let me go out there and play. I clearly understand the role Vossi wants me to do. Exactly. And if I'm one of the 22 that does my role more often than not, We'll win more games. Yeah. It's a very simple. I agree. You know, and, and you get them to that. believe in themselves and their teammates. And the other thing is how the how the playing group at the moment are playing and supporting each other. Yep. You know, whereas at the end of the day, there might have been the blinkers. It's all about me, me, yeah. me. And sometimes people are going a long way out of their way to do something that doesn't give them anything statistically on champion data, but it yep. means significantly to the team ethos that's in place. It, it, it's easy, when when a team's losing, we saw it in, in 89, 90, when the team's losing, you play for yourself. When the team's winning, you play for the team. But when it's losing, you, you are playing for survival. Yep. You want to play for the next week, which is not the right frame of mind. But that's what happens. It's just and human sure nature, you know. It's human nature, and I'm sure that happens now at North Melbourne, at Adelaide, those yeah. teams. I'm sure those guys are yeah. playing so they can play next week, and that's not a long-term no. solution. Yeah. It looks like now, as Doris saying, Carlton boys are playing for each other. Yep. They can see that there is this potential reward yes. down the track if we do all this. Yeah. And what? Are, all right. Then what is that down to now? You think that's down to? We said this before. You think this is down just to the coach, or is it down to? Well, it's a picked up a few players. It's a it's collective not, of everything. Yeah. Let's, not, it's, let's yeah. not lose sight of the fact that Ash Hansen's there, Aaron yeah. Hamill's there. The insistence are important. So you've, had, you've got. Is there any more? Who's doing the? Uh, Hamill. Hamill's doing the back line. Yes. Ash is doing the forward line. Who's yeah. doing the midfield? Um, is it? Oh, the um. Clark. Clark. Okay, so he's so been he's there. Back. He used and to be at Carlton, then went to Gold Coast, now he's back at Carlton. You know and then you've, you've got Fossey, so you've got a whole new... Tim yep. Clark. Tim yeah, Clark, yep. A whole new message coming from people and the coaching groups all working together and yep. Vossi's got the game style they want yep. to play. But, but the, Voss has also taken over a team that has now had Silvani's played 80 games, yeah. Fisher's yep. played 80 games. Lockie O'Brien, um, Kerno's uh, come back Kerno, and been like a yeah. star this year. So, so a couple of good, good recruits in Chera so and Hewitt. So is a good time, Chera yeah. 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 and Hewitt. Um, Kennedy's and young, playing well. Yeah, uh, Lewis Young. Oh, Lewis Young. So yeah. they're all playing well, yeah. He, he yeah, so that's right. So all that helps. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
But then is Voss the right person? Voss and his team. crew, and team, his team will find out. Are they the right people? It looks like they are because the guys are playing with a lot of energy and a lot of confidence. So it looks like they are. So you've, um, had, you've had a few coaches in your time of either at Carlton or other things. Does it make a difference when a player like Voss is coaching you and T who have had success and like Voss was a beast? He could, I don't does think he, so. No? Not for me, no. Because it's, it's all depends on what they're like as a coach. Because yeah. I've had some uh, yeah, yeah. coaches uh, who have been great players at the Waffle and, and Wayne Shibbles when I went to North Melbourne yeah. um, and yeah, uh, Jess Lanko and Robert Walls, yeah. David Parker. Oh, oh, yeah. So no, it's, to me it's what they're like as a coach okay. and the communication to the players. So what, what they've, they've done, done beforehand has no impact? I don't think so. Okay, not for me, not for me. Oh, no, they do oh look, somebody like Vossi coming into a club, I would have... Does he have the advantage of well, credibility? I would, I would have imagined with players, they'd have the utmost respect for yeah. what he's accomplished in his right. career. Yeah, but he could lose that respect in a couple of if weeks. He's really if, he's yeah. if he doesn't And do I that. reckon at the end of the day, he would have... He and the whole coaching group, including Tim Clark, Ash Hanson, Aaron Hamill, collectively would have made very good, strong bonds with the playing group Straight and built that relationship. Yeah. So that, it, you know, like it's so much different, you know, like from our era, there was no assistant coach. That's Parko, it, yeah. Parko, Parko had come out. How many well, we, did you have any assistant? Well, we had no. the whole was no. a reserves coach. Yeah, Colin had come out. So back in our days, you had Wes Loft as the chairman, Walsey would be the coach, yeah. Colin Kinnear was the reserves coach, Shocko was the yeah. And Ashley shopper. was a runner, so yeah. he was probably there to help yeah. out. Yeah. Trevor Keogh was a runner. Trevor Keogh, sorry. Yeah. You always collectively met at quarter time as a group of 20. Yeah. There was yeah. no segregated yeah. things, yeah. so I don't seen. think there was yeah. any specific, well, let me talk about the back line for three minutes while the other 14 yeah. stood yeah. around getting cold. It yeah. was just a collective yeah. message that went out about how we're performing over the course of the game all over the ground mm, sort yeah. of thing you know so but, uh, uh, back in our day it was also autocratic coaches like you do as i say don't question me yeah now <laughs> it's more of a they work together oh Fossey, you know what you told me to do this but what about if i did this yeah. and then they would sit and have a chat and they'd come up with with the right yeah. they're right open to group. receive a bit of feed, not so much feedback but not challenging you as a coach no, just at the end of the day like, getting clarification. there's nothing wrong with that it'd like being a coach and then having your match committee and then you don't want to listen yeah. to any yeah. of the comments yeah. and, and the direction that the match committee yeah. went oh yeah oh, i'm voting for him you know but yeah. the coach will live and die by his ultimate decision and there does. might be other other things tabled but they live and die by the decision they make they're generally the first one that gets shown the door yeah when things go bad, but I think you can see now it's more collaborative approach of across and the whole playing be. group and the coaching group. And, you know, that's, that's setting them up for, hopefully, from our perspective, I don't know about Rock, you look at the way they're going, the next two or three years look like being quite exciting for the football club, yep. and we've been a bit dry since '95. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's so important, like, you know, you get somebody like Jacob Wiedering back this yeah. week, you know, it, from all reports, Mitch McGovern's been training over the last two or three yeah. weeks, and they reckon another two weeks, and he'll probably, I reckon, play VFL for a week or two. Yeah. But the important thing, and then you've got Pitnet coming all back. Right, so, uh, all right, that's a good... So McGovern, yeah? You, you, you watch the game intensely like the... Oh, look, I'm not as intense as, as you may be. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'll watch the game, <laughs> I have and, to I'll, and I'll see, I'll see what's going on. We still yell, and, yell at the All right, so McGovern screen. comes back, yeah? And that, we've got the squad as it is right now, so you know the squad, you know the back line, yeah? Do you remember yeah. the back line? Who do we take out? Well, if McGovern comes back... Yeah, just back, say McGovern's ready. If McGovern comes back in as a tour, so all, all the coaching well, group will be looking Boyd. back as... What are Boyd's you, out. Boyd's out, is he? Yeah, Boyd's out. He's got a foot thing. But He's at the end of the day, out. I'd go because you go Lewis Young, Jacob Wiedery. So they, they're a lock in 100%. Right. Subject to who you're playing. But McGovern yeah. would be the third tall. Mitch, Mitch yeah. McGovern so would be the third tall. Who's the yeah. third tall there now? Plowman. Lockie Plowman. Plowman's doing it. Brody Kemp's done it the last couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, he's things got dropped like this that. week. Yeah. No disrespect to no, no, Lockie no, no, Plowman. Is, at the end of the day, if Mitch McGovern... Gets himself right in and his best. But would you play McGovern in front of Palmer? Mate, it, oh, based, based on where it sure. depends on who you're playing. 
Yeah. You know, but he's got to earn the right. Depends on the matchup. He's got to earn the right. But I, I, I don't feel Lockie Plowman has got the capacity to intercept Mark like Mitch McGovern yeah. does, like True. his brother. Even though he's he's playing well, Plowman, I kind of like he's the the whipping. Yeah, boy. but he's still not tall enough. No, he's not. Game. He's in that middle. He's only thing, 190, yeah. probably. Yeah. I know but Mitch I, is only 192 or something like that. But the good, I don't have the information here. No, no, but if you go, if you went back and looked at the stats with Champion Data, when he intercepts the mark, and then you look at his kicking efficiency, Mitch McGovern, I think we get the ball more often than not when it leaves his foot. Yeah. You know, so he uses it really well. Yeah. And then if we get pit met, so if you think about Mark. Like he yeah, would, is come back, and yeah. Tom DeConi, yes. so what happens is, to He plays, but again, it's an easy. It's an easy. to play in both. Yeah, yeah. Where, well, it's, it's again you're kind of you're kind <laughs> of like uh, rotating through the through the front. Yeah. I have an idea. Why not chuck Kuno down back? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Who made that suggestion? Rocky's just come up with something that's just. No, no, no. One of the one of the someone else. Journo's recently suggested to. I think Kurnow, Kurnow was it was a, it Kane Corn? Kerno would be excellent. Kane back Corn with... said, Oh, they should be throwing Kerno in the back line. No, well, you don't no, want to no. put Mitch McGovern there because we've tried him there. No, 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 Mitch no, McGovern. He's, he's forward. He's but it's, it's gonna be it'll yeah. be a challenge because it's good, good the theory is have. what we've got to do is if McGovern has been training for the last two weeks and trains yep. full on for the next two weeks, that gives him a month to come from this hand percent. So I reckon he plays one or two games in the VFL and it's important that if they want him and think that he's their best option leading into the final, should we make it, he's got to play three games at the top end of town. Remembering those, yeah. those three games are Melbourne, Brisbane, Yeah, Collingwood. so some tough. So, and so who do we bring in after he does a hamstring again? Well, if he does it, oh, no, <laughs> don't jinx if the he does it, then that's his problem. He's very injury prone, that yeah. guy. Yeah, I know. But he, he needs to provide what is subtly called Mitch the return on investment. Yes. You know, so you can't buy land and realise you've spent seven hundred thousand dollars and you sell it five years later. For and that's the problem with him because they spend so much on him. But he, well, you know, he comes under the under the spotlight always. You know, it's oh seven hundred grand and we're getting nothing out of him. You know, if he was a player that we'd paid nothing for, you wouldn't even talk about him. You know, but but you, you take the big money you have expectations oh, you do you do, um, you do so yeah. that's it's not his fault it's, no it's not his fault manager good job so <laughs> what do we so what do we do at the end of the day when we come up with the conundrum in a couple of weeks Pitnett or Ticoni that's the biggest conundrum I think so I think Pitnett's our biggest and you have to play that. yeah I agree, I agree. I think he's but you've then got to make your mind up when you get to if you end up with your Geelongs of the world or your Melbournes of the world and probably Brisbane. your Brisbane's of the world who are going to finish up the top three now. Yep. So the four sides that currently sit in the top five. So if you start with Melbourne at the top, Gorn and Luke Jackson. Yep. Geelong, you've got Stanley and Blitzels yep. that'll end up rocking. Brisbane, you've got McInerney and maybe um, Joe Danaher will do that little five or six minutes. Yeah. <coughs> and then you've got Fremantle who've got Sean Darcy and then Rory Lobb who yep. doesn't like to play ruck but yep. he gives that chop out. Now if we're playing any of them in the finals, we need two can ruckers. we survive with Tom and Jack, Mark and Jack? No, you can't. They're killing Jack. To me like they're killing Jack. I mean he's doing a great job. So, so what's, what's his position? Jack. Yeah. I would playing that forward kind of like that link player. Yeah, yeah. he's got to get up. He's got to be the Richard Dennis of the team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but he's yeah, only. Yeah, he does, yeah. I'm it's surprised. Really, I mean that. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. And he does that well when he does that. He well. doesn't do it as well as what he used to this, do. This it. year, he, he's been good this year. <laughs> he's been good this year. And Very Rocky, good. Rocky used to kick a lot of goals. Yeah, so is Jack. So don't Jack worry about Jack. He'll be alright. No, he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. He I'm needs. Jack, he needs to be that connector. Yeah. And you leave Charlie and Harry. Back 100%, closer to goal, 100%. separated, so they... All right, then, so what do you do then with, like you said, with uh, Pitt and then plays in the ruck that he's going to rotate with TDK, and then what do you do? You just rotate TDK through the forward line, or...? Well, they, it may be, they may come on and off the bench. You've got to sit there, then you go, OK, who are the two current ring wings? Lockie O'Brien's on one, and we've got... Jack our, Nunes. 
Well, you got Nunes, Nunes or Cottrell? Cottrell. Cottrell. Like we call him Cottrell because yeah. he's I like his legs. <laughs> <laughs> I like all his leg speed and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. So, but at the end of the day, and then we've got all our little ones. Zach Fisher's been yeah, Zach absolutely been brilliant been this year. Just got himself Why? a new two. Why? They, but they played him in the right yeah. position. Well, somebody said, I think you can play 100%. Rocco. And then again, the, the 60 kilo burden 100%. on his shoulders is now gone. Put a Superman cake on it. Yeah. Then you've got to think about, okay, so you've got Durden. I like Durden. You've been dropped Owies. this week. Okay. Owies been good. Yeah, so he's come in, like that's right, he goes in the but that's what you've got to do. You've got to sit yep. there. If you end up with yeah, Kai, Kerno, and Silvani <laughs> as your three in the front half, then you've got to find the three that fit around them and who can potentially pop forward. Like you've got Jack Martin, who's also a potential. You got Jack Martin. That's or another return from Jesse investment Motlop. we're looking for. So he's a nice army on Jack Martin, but there's an eye thing. I'd rather have Jesse Motlop. Well, Mate, Jesse, gonna do Jesse's going to be a very good player. He's, he's, he's going to be a little ripper. Yeah, but he doesn't do it, long doesn't enough. Do it enough. So, yeah. Oh, anyway, that's another issue. <laughs> so they're the dilemma Vossi and them yeah, have course, got. It's but a good I, dilemma they have. But I reckon you can get away with, particularly if you're playing any of those four sides, and it may very well be Pitnett and, and Tom. See, Tom's... You've moved Tom De Conning potentially forward for a period of time of just yeah, to throw a, a spanner yeah, in the works yeah. that the oppo have then got to go, oh, oh hang on, we've got two six-foot eighters and we've got Charlie Kerno, and then who's a very good contested mark and good on the lead. Then you've got Jack Silvani that takes a good mark as well. But if you had to just give them ten minutes or eight minutes each, bang, 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 in the ruck, so the constant pressure's there, we've got enough through the midfield with Cripper, Hewitt, Yep. Um, Walshy, Chera, Chera mm -hmm. and the other Maddie ones, Kennedy, Zach Fisher, Zach Fisher Maddie yeah. Kennedy. So we've got Kennedy, half a yeah. dozen of them that are rolling through this. So you just got to keep that constant pressure through, from Pieces that midfield there, group. Aren't they? You know, so pieces are there. I'm loving it. So that's why you, you know, I don't know yeah. how Rocky feels, but all of us old boys yeah. can now see actually that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and there's probably a thing that you know, you never say never, but. This may not be our year, but it may be our year to play finals, win a final, yep. oh, get great. beat maybe in the next one, and then that group go away oh, with a hunger that we, we want to get further. better, and 23, 24, 25, maybe one of those years or two of those years that we could justifiably think we've got the talent to win a oh, You No one retiring anytime soon, no. no. No one Ed, in that retirement. No, Ed Kerner. He's, he's the, about the only one. But Ed, he's the only one over 30 on the list. He hasn't played this year. He's the only one over 30 on the So we've got two or three years of a consistent team. Yeah. Well, you two have both played in premiership sides. So do you see that the Carlton of 2022 has got what it takes to actually make a grand final and win it? And win it? In yes. 2022. In yes. 2022. I'd love to see it. I'm, I'm have you got any question marks? And if you have, well, where, where are my those? My question marks are we've had a lot, a lot of injury. I, I said earlier on that I think to win a premiership you need a, you, your best 15 or 16 to play all year, though. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. Because the more you play together, the more you yeah. instinctively yes, um, good point. react, especially under pressure. Yes, You've got to yes. play matches together. I'd yeah. be more of so, a betting man, 23-24, yeah, where I'd the say Carlton next faithful of course. could yeah. go into a year thinking, hey, we can win it this year. And don't forget, like Melbourne won it last year and they were comprehensive, yeah. certainly in September over here. But they weren't WI, comprehensive they, throughout the year. No. But and then all of a sudden, they, where did they finish in 2020? They were in the bottom half. And that's right, so, yeah, that so there is hope, and it's like yeah. everything in life. Mm. Whilst you know, you're pit net and but they were in a preliminary two years prior or something. No. 2018, they played in a preliminary final here against West Coast, got beat no, but against the eventual later on, Premier. They also made it. No, couple, think, they no then 2019, they went right down yeah. to second last, point? and then 20, they finished ninth. Yeah. And, and then, then they went from ninth to premiers they, they in 2021. So there is that opportunity. So they didn't even make the eighth the year yeah. before. Okay. So there is the opportunity, but like Rocky said, you need your good players playing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost it like for those last four rounds, mm. when we, I don't know who we play, I think it's, it'll be Adelaide, Melbourne, jo uh, Brisbane, Brisbane and Collingwood. Spot on. So Spot whatever, on. whatever is around, our... Brisbane, then Melbourne, then Collingwood. Is it? No. So whatever our best 25 are, that realistically would include a McGovern, a 
yeah. than Mark Pitnett because yeah. Mark's a different ruckman to Tom. 100%. Tom's only still a young man. Yeah. Mark is the one that, a bit. yeah, he, gets, he needs to get bigger, but he, he's got a big But, you know, I didn't realise Pitnett's 204 centimetres, and he's big probably boy. 100 So he'll give he's you that, bit like size. Earl Spalding, yeah. had the way Earl played centre yeah, half forward right. in the Premiership year. No fanfare, but I'm just a fierce yeah, competitor and don't get in my way. And that's what Mark does. De Conning's athletic, and Tom yeah. De Conning's got the capacity to be the best ruckman in the competition yeah, yeah, for a five yeah. or a six year period, That's right. from age 23 to 29 yeah. sort of thing. Mm. So, you know, if we can get the, though, and I'm not sure, where does Zach Williams fit in at all? Well, he, he's going to be ready in a few weeks too, maybe two or three weeks, and, and he's one that if he's ready, you're probably going to play him, you know? You know, but and then again, where, where do you convinced? place him? Well, he's wearing convinced. a very distinguished I, jumper. I, I think I think yeah, we need yeah, a... Um, right, so <laughs> that's <laughs> right. I mean, it, but I he, think he, he took over the jumper from the iconic Cade Simpson. Cade Simpson. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and me, and then somebody else before Yeah, me, Gary Crane. That's right. But yeah. uh, that's an interesting one down the back. You it look is. at the back six. So but but how many defenders can you have no, you that can't. don't man up, that don't run an attack? And oh. I think Saad does it very well. Oh, look, and Saad uses the ball. He's a, he's a, he uses he's, the ball very well. I don't think we can have both of them in the same side. That's yeah. where I'm. No, I'm, you can't. That's where I'm. Because I, I've yelled at the television on many occasions with uh, Zach sometimes. So uh, you know, like, and it's almost yes. like you know what we're after is a consistent effort. Yeah. You can't give me 100 percent in this contest and 70 in that one because. If you give me 75 in that, you are highly likely to get hurt because you're not committed to the cause. Yeah. When you're committed to the cause, you generally exit the contest in sound condition. Yeah. So Nick Newman does a good job. Nick Newman goes off because he's an important He does his job. Do you think Carlton does, does that? Do you think that they play these high-priced recruits on big salaries because of the, that fact? It, uh, yeah, I have to in preference well. to... <laughs> Uh, a, a lesser, right, a lesser right. play, like a, man, a lesser light. Playing like in the yeah, reserves. Yeah, I like to think when they're picking the team, they're not looking at the salary they play. You, you do like wonder though, don't you? Whether they have other pressures The Zach Williams's, on them. the Jack Martins, the Mitch yeah, McGovern's. Whether they have other pressures, you know. I don't know, but you would think they'll be picking the team based on mm. the best side what they play. What they give. Look, I, I tip Carlton, because I do a bit of a, with a few mates, we try to predict the ladder at the start of the season, and I had Carlton coming ninth. Right. What? No faith. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I thought I that didn't was maybe like the yeah. yeah. But um, but next year, I think yeah, I think top four is a genuine contender. And then once you're in the top four, anything you, can happen. You, you are mm. oh, you're right. that contender. So if right. we can't make the top four this year, I think the AFL would want a club like Carlton to finish yeah. fifth or sixth. So whoever was to play. play and wouldn't it be nice if mm. Carlton finished fifth and Collingwood finished eighth oh, and we have our first final at the MCG oh. in front of 95,000 people? We could be playing Collingwood round 23 and then first, first final. Well, well, I was just going to ask, you two, I've got a feeling, I'm not sure about you, Rocky, because of injury, but did you both play the qualifying final of 1988? No, I against did my Connor. knee in 88. I did, yeah. You did? did you I play? did my knee in 88. Yeah, oh, that's right, yeah. you did your knee. Yeah. That is the last time we played Collingwood in a final. Yeah. 34 yeah. years ago. And we beat him. And Yet the won. rivalry yeah. still seems to be alive. We got beat by Melbourne, Melbourne in the preliminary. Yeah. Yeah. Did you feel that rivalry between Carlton and Collingwood when you were playing? I did. Yeah, I did. Well, that was the two it, biggest everyone clubs. Saying, oh, you, you've got to hate Collingwood. We hate Collingwood. And I knew, I think I, I don't care. Actually, you did, Jordine, that game that Silvani yeah, took the, the fantastic mark. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Mark of the year, I think it was. Someone else got injured that day. Uh, Warren McKenzie. Yeah. We Warren both McKenzie got injured that time. day too. And yeah. the week after was Dave Coonan and Peter Dean. That's right. Um, but uh, everyone said, oh, you, you've got to hate Collingwood. <laughs> oh, I didn't hate because I always played well against Collingwood, so I didn't hate them. I always played well against them. You ended up doing your knee against them, though. Yeah, well, yeah. You yeah, got um, the malocchio. You got the malocchio. You got the malocchio. Yeah. As we say in Italian, the the the, uh, the evil eye. The evil eye. <laughs> yeah. The curse. But um, but I, I enjoyed playing against Collingwood and Essendon because they were big clubs, big games. Yeah. yeah. Big crowds. And, 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 right. and Richmond. And Richmond. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But so who do you hate the most? Not so much in the I late didn't. 80s because Richmond were 
they were yeah, so but not travelling well. Still big crowds and still yeah. big, big crowds. Big, but, you know, yeah. sort of big. Collingwood nests in the middle. Yeah. Well, well, you know, you look, I looked on the AFL app the other day, and they're talking about membership records that yeah, are broken, yeah. which is interesting. And I reckon if I guessed in '86, '87 when we won the flag, I reckon we had 16 or 17,000 yeah, members. You reckon? No, I think that's what it was yeah. back then. Might have so been 20. I think, you know, yeah. we've, we've broken right now. 85,000. 80, 85, 80, yeah. yeah. You know, and it's interesting, Richmond, you know, West Coast had over 100, and Richmond, yeah, Richmond had, had over 100. 100. And I said, mm. oh, what happens if every West Coast member wanted to go no, to a game at Optus Stadium? So you, do, you wonder how the you mechanism of a, how can you sell 100,000 memberships? It's a very good now, question, like, they sell, I think it was, was it the Collingwood game? Like, tickets were sold out. And I, I'm a member, right? I haven't got a reserve seat. Is this seat. for our away game? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had to buy, I had to buy a ticket, and I've got, I've got a general pass to get in. I had to buy a ticket right? to they get just, a seat. To get yeah, a seat, yeah. they just, they yeah. couldn't accommodate it. So everyone. what do they do with the AFL members and the MCC members that take up a fair chunk of the MCG? Yeah. They're always entitled to go yeah. through their membership. So what does that leave in terms of capacity? And then. Let's take out all the corporate boxes. So realistically, when you think about a game, Carlton Collingwood, which is our home yeah, game, round 50, 23, 000. you know, Carlton have got 85,000 members. Collingwood have got to have access to some tickets yep. for their members. How does it work come round 23 when, if we're sort of sitting there and we could finish fourth with a win or fifth with a win, how do our members that have paid their money get a ticket? Unless you've got a reserve game? seat. You're going to have to get them real yeah. early, like early what on in the week. What it does is it puts pressure to... on people to pay more money to yeah, get up that, the queue, it, 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 so that they're yeah, given the priority. The and the, day, the ones who pay the most money get the, get the first priority, and then the second gets the, the second end of priority. Day, I think just being a member, just being part. If you're of just a general so admission member, you're day, almost got no chance. Yeah, and and there are a lot of Carlton supporters here in Perth. Yeah, there so is. I'll, I'll be intrigued to see how many get yeah. there on Sunday. Oh, it's going to be loud. We you'll, get a, have it you'll get over five thousand because you won't get you won't get fifty thousand West Coast people. No. You might, but you know they've been falling off. When you guys yeah, played, when you guys played for Carlton in Perth against West Coast, did you get a good reception, or did you get booed, or did no, you get clapped, or no, not, not booed. Or did, or did you get I don't nothing? Think they booed much back then. No, they're too nice. Um, <laughs> no, but I do always remember there was always a pretty good Carlton turnout. And certainly when I retired and went and watched Carlton play Eagles, because you go to an Eagles game, it's invariably all Eagles. But when Carlton there, and I'm sure Collingwood and Essendon are probably the same, you could definitely see that there's a Carlton feel to the... There is. To the, to the, uh, definitely here. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Oh, there'd be plenty of them that'll turn up oh, someday, yeah, and yeah, I hope, yeah. hope it has a little shower in the morning and then no rain in the afternoon, yeah. so Harry and Charlie and Jack can do oh, their that's work in the front we finish them yeah. up. Oh, I'm expecting 100 point win, don't worry about that. Oh, oh, don't say that, Rocco. Come that's on, mate, you've got to be confident. I want to show you something, I'm going to show you something, right? So, uh, two of my co-hosts, Mars and Paul, right, Mars, we do a TikTok, right? And we spoke to Ange Christie, remember Ange Christie? Yeah, yeah. All right, so Ange Christo said this little story because he was a Collingwood supporter, right? So I want you to watch this and tell me what you think about it. So push that one there. You need to watch or listen. Yeah, yeah you can watch and listen. So push yeah, that press one. the button, Rocky. Yeah, push it's going to be a surprise. One. That one there. The one on the right. Okay. That's a bad idea. So he's getting in the cheer squad as a reserve player. He would go into the cheer squad because he reckons no one would know him, and he'd still cheer for Collingwood yeah. while he was playing the yeah. time. But did you hear that bit of that? <laughs> Don't read <really did>. so, <laughs> so yeah. What do you say about that to, to Ange? Hey, what do you say to Ange about that? He's all right. I like <laughs> I like his mate Cooter. He's actually over here yes. tomorrow, sort of thing. So. 
years going down. Yeah, we yeah. spoke to Kudo too. Well, I suppose, it, like, like I said, I didn't really follow any teams. I didn't care who I went to. Yeah. But I suppose if you grow up yeah. being a Collingwood and all of a sudden you can't because not by choice they've selected yeah. you, so you have no choice where to mm. go. I suppose that probably. But I well, would have thought the moment he puts on a Carlton jumper, I would have thought. No, all black so and white him and Kuda for years. Was when they still, were playing under 19s yeah, and reserve. Was still before, well, they became, would, no, yeah. before they became Household established senior players. Yeah. 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 And then they become, and now he can't stand the side. Like it's yeah, weird, course, it's weird. Of course, yeah. 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 It's weird, yeah. So. <laughs> That's a funny story. That is a funny story. And funny now, of course, story. thanks to Rocco and, and the boys on the jumper punch, we've brought back the Wolf. The Wolf. To Adam Sayers. Oh, so oh, okay. Yeah, so we. Yeah. Well, why is that like, all for left footers? What, I don't know. We just. No, it's not look, really because the very first wolf was Val Perabi. But he was a left footer back in no, no right back in the early eighties. You're right. Big he had a Perry. booming right foot, but he could also kick really, really well on his in left. His left, yeah. So yeah. that's right. But he was a right footer. He was a right footer. Yeah. But they're all half back or so. They're all. Back. Well, they happen to be half backers. They're all back. So oh, got... Sorry, so you've never played in the back line? Oh, no, I, I've always said back when I failed forward. <laughs> Funny you should say that. You were, <laughs> got to get out there. A lot of you were a renowned <laughs> centre half forward before you came to Carlton, and then all of a sudden they played the centre half yeah, back. How did that work? Yeah. Every now and then I've got to Every now and then I've got to go and read the scrapbooks that my mother compiled over the years, and I shed yeah. a tear every now and then. <laughs> it's so, so you were a centre half forward before you came to Carlton? I played on you a couple of times. So, so oh, did why, why, why did they then put you in the centre half back? Oh, how'd you, wait a sec, how did you go there? He played on you a couple of times. How did that go? Early at East Perth. Yeah. Yeah. Early, I can't remember. Well, I do. Did you <laughs> play in the back line? Because one time we played at your home ground and you guys won by 20 goals and you kicked seven or something on me. And I tried everything to do oh, to stop sure. him getting the ball. Played in front, played in front. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. And then the next round we played at my home and it was much even and I was all over you and then you did an ankle in the second or third quarter the surrender you, you barely had a touch <laughs> and you did an ankle and I think you missed the state game yeah you mongrel yeah, you pushed well, me over no, I didn't, but you didn't ankle <laughs> I wanted you to play the whole game so I can prove that, 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 that I could win. Oh, that he actually game. beat him. Because yeah. he, he sort of kicked eight in the last half. <laughs> <had over there. laughs> but you did the ankle. Yeah. That would have been I would have reminded him of the... You know, remember that game early on, Rock, round two? So. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. But no, the yeah, strange thing that happened with me... And look, it's, in, it's interesting. I can look back now, and when, when I ended up coming to Carlton, the only club that really didn't approach me was Collingwood. Oh. And... No disrespect to Craig Stasevich. Yeah. Like, from all reports, if I look at the scrapbooks of my journey, I did play a little bit of the back line, but certainly mm -hmm. in 1983, 84 and 5, as a 21, 22, 23 year old, I played centre half forward, you know, so, um, and had some you know, pretty good games, yeah. significant games where you're kicking goals. Sort of thing. So then people will sit there. Grant Dorrington, who Richard would know very well, he used to, there was used to be a magazine over here like Westside Footy, yeah. and he used to write an article in it. And this was post after I've signed with Carl. Yeah. And then he turned around and, and he came down and watched the game of footy, and I didn't play that well. And then he put a story in Westside Footy about me that after seeing me play. And he said, oh, he wants to get his head deflated a little bit because he said he's just signed with Carlton and he thinks he's the ant's pants. And then the next round after the Swan Districts, we played, this is in 1985, we played Swan Districts at Fremantle Oval. I played centre half forward. I kicked 10 goals. What was your two. club? South Fremantle. South Fremantle. South Fremantle. So I played centre half forward. I played on Murray Rance, Lewotny, Kranzberg. I had five opponents. I had 17 kicks, 15 marks. <laughs> two handballs and kick ten goals two from centre half forward and then next week comes out West Side story. Grant's got his story in this he said, Look, I have to retract something <laughs> that I wrote about John Dorotich the other week. He said, I had the pleasure of seeing one of the best games executed of football as the centre half forward that I've ever seen yeah. in my time in footy. And you know, un unfortunately when when you get picked up at Carlton sticks 
great state of origin player for yeah. South Australia. If you kick 10 goals on Bruce Dool at some point in time in the state of origin goes, you might have yeah. a very big tick, this guy can play. <laughs> so Sellers was still there, so I come over and did play a bit of back half yeah. early on in the 80s with Brownie in 81 and 82. So when you come over, Sellers is still there as the captain in 86. Stevens, the centre half forward, that's kicked 10 goals on oh, Dooley. Val Perevic, or no, it wasn't Bruce Reed, Bruce retired, Reed. who was Sam and Ben Reed's father, and he was playing centre oh, yeah. half back at Number Carlton. 17. Yeah. So all of a sudden, when you look at the side that finished in 85, there's a vacancy at centre yes. half back and a vacancy somewhere Very between so. yeah. full forward and centre half forward. And I could have bet you a million dollars that my name wasn't going to sit yeah, on the front right. part of the agenda. And that was okay because at different stages I played, you know, had a really good run there in the back half and ended up kicking goals, so 102 goals or something. 103. Yeah, different stages moving, you know, when things weren't going right. Paco moved me, yeah. Wolsey had yeah. me in that 88 qualifying final against Collingwood. So I yeah. went down there and made a difference. but. You know, you look at you can look at it in hindsight. I think it was just unfortunate that you leave one state as something that they reckon one of the best centre half forwards yeah. in the last 20 years, but you never really got your chance to execute mm. that type yeah. of role yeah. at the club you went to. Because because of Kearney. Kearney. <laughs> All because of Kearney. Kearney. Yeah, yeah, so. I, I reckon he, I reckon he could have played centre half back just but a little bit. But in, all, but in all honesty, I remember it like it was yesterday when you came over. You slotted in at centre half back beautifully, and, oh, yeah. and you played some fantastic football. Yeah, yeah. Great marking and Mate, you know, spoiling at the right time. Your, your duels with Dermot Brereton was something to behold. Yeah. Well, Lou Richard used to love them because yeah. the Irishman versus the Crow out of yeah. the headlines <laughs> and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But, but Sticks and I had a really good relationship. Like I'm not much of a handballer. I reckon, like like yeah. you said. You know, I defended really well, like, and it's pretty simple. If I'm not, if it's not advantage me from a marking perspective, mm. well, then I'd destroy the ball. Yeah. And if I happen to catch it and get on the end of it, a simple thing for mm. me was lift your eyes, sitting up ahead 60 odd metres of yeah. Stephen Kernahan. Yeah. So why would you want to go anywhere different than other than give him the best opportunity to retain the 40 once and I've 30 metres running across would have been Richard Dennis when you just <laughs> go yeah. straight to Kearney. You, ne you, you never spoke up enough. That was, that was your <laughs> life. That was your life as a half forward you had, next to Kearney. If you had any brains, you would have then run past sticks after he's marked it, looking for a handle. Take the hair, so take well, the But then realise you've got what he have twice. Given it, to you? it took me a while to realise that if I make a lead, well, they're not going to kick to me. They're going to go to, go to Kearney. So I'll just hang around him and just that's jump it. in front of him that's and take the mark yeah, in front yeah, of him. That's it. But <laughs> the intercept forward, which you were very, very if, good If there was doing. a game that you played that was your most memorable, successful game from an individual perspective, what would have been? Do oh, you remember a game Carlton, that was just a yeah, standout for you? Yeah, at Carlton there was in 1988 against Sydney Swans up at Sydney. Yes. Did a hamstring just before half time, so I didn't play the second half. But I, I don't know the stats I've had. But it would would have been make him up eight or not yet eight or nine marks. <laughs> That's what he does. Um, yeah, yeah. He says it so confidently. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seventeen uh, kicks, fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one because that was probably the best so game it, in my whole career. It was career. like I had a ball on the string, and even the missed kicks were going. I remember my way. that game in Sydney. And, yes. and I played really well. And, I, and we smashed them too. Yeah, it all works. Yeah, for you. there's yeah. times when it just all works. Yeah. Yeah, and you right don't spot, know right why. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you can wake up in the morning, we're all diligent about we like our sleep yeah. and have your little routine. Yeah. But the interesting thing is sometimes you can wake up and you, you feel as good as you've ever felt, you know, you've had a great sleep and you don't play well. Then other yeah. times you could turn around and you have a restless yeah. sleep and yeah. you're mocking about children and all that, yeah. you have disruptions. And then you're feeling tired and lethargic and you go and you play very well. Yeah. So then you understand, how does that work? Because, but especially right. as a half forward flanker, because they're not kicking the ball to you. They're yeah. kicking it to centre half forward, forward. forward. So you've got to, some days the ball comes your way, other days you're running your bum off and you're just not getting anywhere near yeah. it. Especially at Beerville Park which was such a big <laughs> over. Are you often used as the decoy forward to try and open up the forward line for no, the full forward? No, no, that was never on as purpose. There was no instruction. Well, no one no? told me about it, so <laughs> maybe <laughs> I was. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was never the instruction. Right. But at Beerville Park, you can run your guts out and go nowhere near it. Yeah. Um, 
So, whereas Princess Park, which I like playing, much smaller, mm. and you're you always get in more, the play. To more contest, you're always in the you? play, and, and you could always make an impact. Yeah, how good was Princess Park playing there? Yeah. Well, it's small oval, tiny, it was round. But it was so just the crowd, I don't think it was just the crowd. And the crowd we barely had 35,000, did it, back in the day? So I've got to say, you guys I don't think you should consider yourselves. 32 or something? Uh, yeah, I think We're so. We're all standing yeah. room. But it felt like... Yeah, uh, it you should great. consider all... yourselves lucky because seriously, the years that you played, um, probably a good 10 years, 15 years before that as well, of course, but those 1980s, right up until about... 89, 90, I reckon they were the best years oh, well, that, that I, we, had, uh, I had a we great, saw Carlton I had play. a great time with a lot of, a lot of very good memories. Yeah. Um, like Mick, wouldn't have known Doro if I hadn't played with him. Of course, you made um, friends so, yeah, yeah, for life. I met yeah. a lot of good people. So, yeah. Hey, tell me something, superstitions, anything? Uh, in 87, I wore the same jocks every game. All right, I've heard that for so same many Same jocks in every game? Yeah. yeah, yeah I hope you yeah. washed them. <laughs> uh, I lived by myself. No, no, no. You just heard no in fact, they weren't jocks, they were, they were speedos. Yeah. Um, right. And then they wore out, so I didn't wear them in 88, and that's when I got injured. So and there you go. Maybe it was See? the. Uh, it wasn't. So, no, I didn't have that many. But okay. You, you, well, you kept was, running out of the banner. <laughs> you and Kenny Hunter were the six uh, of the I, I never knew that. I was the opposite <laughs> to Kenny, Kenny Hunter. Jump her out, socks down, Kenny. That's so right. I always used to pull the socks up. Get the little garter that you yes. used to tie it down, tuck the jumper in. Yeah. I thought, oh, well, Whereas Kenny had come out, jumper yeah. out, Hanging socks out, down. Socks. Was that a superstition? Or? I don't know if there was a superstition. Or just a ritual, it, maybe. It was more about, you know, presenting yourself. Yeah, doing yeah, the opposite to Kenny. Respectfully, <laughs> if your jumper come out, then you tuck it back in again. You're so. a good looking wog boy, mate. Yeah. You come out there, <laughs> mate, looking it. like, like <laughs> you're looking supreme coming out there, the pan. That's it, very dark back then. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> That's it. Uh, it was good very good. It was it was great time. And look, Richard said it's memories, and mm. I'm glad you can say the period of time because we can all sit back there and oh. say, like, you know, our game was different. The game's yeah. different now, yeah. you know. And there's always a lot of conjecture. People will sit there and go, "Do you reckon Greg Williams would survive in today's game?" Absolutely, 100. percent because they all train differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. if we all yeah. train, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you just adapt to if, you, yeah. if you train the way you, I'm terribly sorry. So, you think all the ability Greg Williams displayed, was he, he wouldn't survive in the modern game today? Rattles at 38. I think that might be better. We talked about Lockett earlier. He would have trained differently. Yeah. He yeah. Would, still would have been a good because he is an intelligent yeah. player. I don't think he'd still get into the zone though. He'd no. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he might not have played that, all that much. That argument's in basketball with like the Jordan and um, like LeBron yeah, now. Right. Like, who's better than that? And I say to my son, because they're big basketball fans, I go, if Jordan had the technology and all the training and the dieting and everything they had today, he'd be better. And I think it's the same with the footy yeah. players. If you have everything that they've got now, mm. you have to be better. You either can play or you can't exactly. play. And we've all you know, had those journeys and there's lots of people that aspire and want to become an AFL yeah. player, but it doesn't always end up on there because it's so different now that you've got all the recruiters and you know, we could be four recruiters sitting watching a game and at the end of it all we can all have a conversation about that young kid over there, Tom yeah. Mitchell, yeah. that I remember when he was over here when Barry Mitchell was here yeah. at WA and Tom yeah. was, you could see he was a ball magnet then, he yeah. just had a hunger to keep on getting to contests and when yes. he got there he impacted and all got the football and that's the way he's played his footy from you know, the last you know, eight or ten years. But. Is everybody can have a different view of all the different players nowadays. So it's really hard because the young player of today really has no control of what that drafting outcome could become. And I yep. still think there's lots of furfies told to you, Rocco, yeah, we're going to pick you up. Pick 61, that's yeah. our pick. And mum and dad are all excited. Yeah. And then pick 61 comes up on draft night. They don't call your name yep. out. And then you're crying and mum and dad have got the shits up big time. But you won't, get, you won't get a call from the club that said we were going to draft you no. as to why. Oh, the circumstances <coughs> change, but... Sure, I suppose another question is, would you rather play now or play when we play? That's a good, good question. question. Yeah. Would you rather play like the that. game now, today's day and age, or would you not trade 
your career when you played no, back then? I, I don't think I'd change it. Uh, only because the way the game is now, like we were all brought up, it was a competitive game and we did compete and there was the one-on-one -on -one contest. You would, you would have loved the contest. Yeah, I mean, but, you thrived on that. Yeah, but it was great. And like at the end of the day, I was lucky. They don't I, have as much of it now. I played on all the great no. footballers. Like yeah. People all sit there and... You know, they'll sometimes, you're a champion, you're a legend. I said, oh, I don't know about that. And I said, look, ended up playing here and in Melbourne and state games, 289 games. So yep. I will tell people, I'll say, look, I'm not a legend, I'm not anything. I said, but the one fundamental thing that I'll say is I played 289 games. I played with the best. I played yep. against the best. I beat the best. And the best made me look a bit silly from time to time. And I said, I wouldn't swap that for the world. And I reckon I'm a pretty good player, but I don't get to that elevated yeah. category that some people may perceive you to be in. Yeah. And that's great that they think that of you. And as I said, like earlier on, it's about, well, hopefully you've made a contribution yeah. to people's lives that love the Carlton Football Club. So, you know, it's... Yeah. But the game today, like I did, I haven't done it for three years. Has but you answered the question? Yeah. But you're on the radio. Yeah. No, I wouldn't swap a thing for the world. Early oh, on. How about you, Rocky? Oh, yeah, you answer I, your own question. Yeah, because I have thought about this, obviously. Um, the advantages of now, obviously, they get paid with money. The money, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's owed it anyway. And, and the other <laughs> benefit of today is the coaching you know, work with you, uh, whereas, as I said earlier, we're the autocratic. Do as I say. Don't question me. Even it was though, more fire and brimstone. Even back though then. there are so many times I'm saying, mate, what you're saying, I don't get, or it doesn't make sense, or, mm. and when you question, they'd have a go at you. You can't do it. So you run out there thinking, this guy's got no idea, but I'm still going to do what he says. Whereas now you can work with the coach. So they're the two positives I like about it. The negatives, I don't like the 24/7 uh, media yeah. and the social media. And, and all these shows on Fox out here, they analyse everything. Every single, and, like, and that, yeah. that Down the ground be footage from behind yeah. the goals and all yeah. that. Yeah, you can't cheat now with all the cameras and yeah, all the media. You can't media. escape anything. Behind no. the goal footage. Um, and I don't like the way a lot of the commentary is retrospective. Like, he did this, he should have done, they should have... Hang on, yeah. the game's going on. Yeah. It's a bit second yeah. to yeah. choice. So, exactly. I don't, so I, I can see why there's a lot of mental health with the young boys now yeah, young reasons, guys yeah. um, because the pressure on them from the media mm. from supporters everyone we didn't have that pressure so to answer the question no I'm happy playing when I played yeah. I don't want all that pressure the money would be good but I wouldn't be prepared to put up the pressure yeah. they can't go so, out it's even the game the like statistically and all that like, yeah you can sit there and, you know, and I've had it before where somebody will sit there and go, oh yeah, I thought Rocco was BOG, three votes. You listen to somebody and then you go under the stats and, oh, okay, so Rocco's had 17 marks. He's had 36 possessions, 30 kicks, six handballs, 17 <laughs> marks, and then you start to digest. That's right. Rocco's had 29 uncontested possessions. Of his 17 marks, 16 were uncontested. Yeah. So Rocco, the had, there, so yeah, Rocco had one forwards, contested mark, yeah. but he lost a lot, and then he had, just because I'm trying to buy a bit of space, sorry, so how can you give him three votes when fundamentally 90% of what he did today was all uncontested? Yeah. He's Meters like, gained 24. Got a free mark, you know? <laughs> I moved it down. Like now down. they're picking on you. They're talking yeah, I know, all of a sudden I was BAG, now they're <laughs> BAG anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought you, were, getting I thought you were very good, but I'm not giving you <laughs> three votes unless you have at least yeah. a 50 50 split. I agree, and they look at stats these days, and Too that's much. how they get their votes. I try to give my votes, I don't try not to look at the stats and give it like straight after the game and say, the like, effect on the game. The yeah, he the played game. well. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, I think also, I don't like the way that last year he had 24.1 possessions, this year he's got 17. Yeah, yeah, possessions. that's right. Played a different role now. Playing a, a new role. And some of the comments that people talk about players, oh, he's not up to it. Imagine if you're a player and you're hearing and reading this. Coming well, from think, blokes that have just finished yeah. a few years ago. Sorry, you didn't have I know, intense media scrutiny in your no, life. No, I not like a bloke like me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but just, they're all, they're all the comments, they get paid to, you know, yeah. analyze well, that's it, job. over, you know, and no, at the end of the day, many, wow, yeah. I can tell you when, when somebody was doing the same to you, you didn't appreciate 
a lot of the commentary when they had a crack at you because you were one of Ross Lyon's golden boys. Yeah, that's right. That played with a completely different set of rules <laughs> than 17 other blokes that had to toe the party line. Yeah. Hang on, who are you referring to? Clearly you have someone in mind. Or someone in the media. Yeah, yeah, but they're all the same. You know, but they do. They There's a couple there. of sick killer players yeah. that are in the media the now. Cho- yeah, the chosen ones that, you know, without, <laughs> you, without you, life would have failed. But, you yeah. know. Yeah. The end of it all, like you've got to do. Oh, your it's all been a good journey, journey, though. You know, you have your ups and downs, but you know, there's good memories. Um, yes, yeah, certainly and great so, memories. And uh, look, you you two provided some fantastic memories for us Carlton supporters that were old enough to, to enjoy it. Back then. No, there's no editing. This is just straight but, um, out. We're hearing everything there. Yeah, nah, this has been good. Nah, look, I mean, for those of us who were around back in '87, oh. we were old enough to enjoy that premiership. Yeah, um, we really, uh, you know, got some fantastic. Uh, memories from it, and um, you two were an integral part of that. And um, it's been absolutely fantastic catching up with you here in Perth. And I, I reckon we could keep talking and yacking for, for hours. We could keep talking for hours. Yeah. I guess you know, all good things must. So come now we turn the camera point. off, and then we can have a real. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Now you tell us what really <laughs> happened in '87. No, 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 yeah, you can it. dub it in over our comments. <laughs> really the boys. Well, she was a mongrel. Oh, thanks, that was <laughs> thank you. All we yeah. can say is cheers to both John oh, Dorotich and Richard Dennis. Well done, boys. Well. And cheers and the blues. And what do you reckon, Rocco? What's that last time? Go Blues! <laughs> <laughs>